We'll call the meeting of the Haywood County Board of Education uh, to order. At this time, uh, I'd like to uh, recognize Mr. Jimmy Rogers to lead us in the board's invocation. Please rise. Let us pray. Kind, gracious Heavenly Father, so thank you so very much for another year. Another year has passed, Lord, and we begin a new year. We thank you for the success <coughs> of the children in the semester, school semester. We pray that you give us great success for another semester. Lord, we pray that we are able as a board to give the teachers the tools that they need to better educate the children of this county, to give them the best opportunities available, and to let them grow and be successful. Lord, we know that we will give you the praise and the glory for all those things, but we ask your guidance upon us as we do the, the business of a board, as we do the business of this Haywood County school system. We thank you again for the accomplishments that these children have made. These students, as we can see here tonight, their success stories, their growth, and their wisdom that they can gain by being better educated. Lord, we pray for those families who are in need and who help, who needs help. We pray that we can offer tools and abilities to make Haywood County the best it can be. God, and direct us in all that we do. We'll give you the praise and the glory for it all. Amen. Amen. At this time, I'd like to recognize Lieutenant Colonel Leslie to lead us in our Pledge of Allegiance. States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You may be seated. Thank you, Lieutenant Colonel Leslie from the Tuscola Air Force Junior ROTC program for taking care of that for us this evening. Thank you. Under our announcements, our next regular board meeting will be held here at the Education Center on February the 11th at 7 o'clock. I'd also like to uh, announce that we will have uh, the Altrusa Soup Fundraiser. Uh, it's coming up. It's, uh, it's a great fundraiser for us. The money goes right back into the foundation for our Haywood County students. It's Tuesday, January 22nd. Is that correct? Uh, from 11 o'clock, so from 11 o'clock to 6 o'clock, so you can go twice and uh, double up on it and have good soup both times. And it's at the First United Methodist Church in Wines. Well, please make plans to attend this uh, fundraiser for the Haywood County Schools Foundation. I'd also like to announce that uh, there are tickets available currently. They do sell out normally. Is for the Mardi Gras coming up on February the 23rd. Uh, 2019 at 6 p.m. at Law Ridge Country Club. That's a major fundraiser for the Haywood County Schools Foundation. It's the premier event I feel like in Haywood County, and it raises a lot of money for our students for scholarships and other needs of the uh, Haywood County Schools uh, children and students. Are there any other announcements that need to be made? Okay, I do know of agenda adjustments that do need to be made. I think there's one from the Finance Committee. Is that right, Mr. Clark? Yes. So we go ahead uh, under uh, the regular financial month the reports. There is one other uh, motion that needs to be taken care of tonight. Uh, with that objection, we will add that to the agenda. Is there any objection? There being none, it will be added to the agenda on item number 19. Mr. Chairman, Building and Grounds needs to add one motion. Okay, Dr. Rogers wanted to add one under Building and Grounds. We'll do that uh, between uh, 19 and 20. We'll just add it in between there, and we'll have a motion coming forward from the Building and Grounds Committee. Is there any objection to adding one item from the Building and Grounds Committee? There being none, we'll add it to the agenda as presented under 19 and 20. And when we get there, please don't let me forget. <laughs> At this time, I would like to uh, ask Mr. Jeff Haney to come forward for some special recognitions. 
presentation. Chairman Francis, board members, Dr. Nolte, Dr. Putnam, Ms. Barker, it is an honor for me to introduce the uh, Tuscola High Air Force Junior ROTC. I love their mantra, it says, never say die. I said, are you, which one of them's the meanest? The one that did the pledge. They said, no, that wasn't it. Which one of you was the meanest one? <laughs> no question, no question. We have Major David Klontz, he's our Senior Aerospace Science Instructor, and with us tonight is Senior Master Sergeant Stephen Robertson. He's an Assistant Aerospace, Aerospace Science Instructor, along with three of his cadets, and they're here to present the annual Cadet Corps Briefing. Good evening, and thank you so much. On behalf of uh, Mr. Todd Trantham, Tuscola High School Principal, and Major David Klontz, it is uh, my uh, great privilege here to introduce some of our finest cadets here to talk to you about the major accomplishments that they've been working on since April of 15th last year in preparation now, which will culminate in our unit evaluation on the 25th of February. So I have, again, three here. I have uh, Cadet Lieutenant Colonel Jack Leslie, who's going to start us off with uh, the presentation, and then we'll hand that off to Cadet Captain Clay Payne and Cadet First Lieutenant Leah Cagle. I'm going to go ahead and do that now. First off, I'd like to thank the board for letting us come in here and do this. This is a great and tremendous honor and privilege for us to come in here and do this, so thank you very much. Mr. Francis, it's nice to see you again. Um, again, uh, we are Tuscola Air Force Junior ROTC. We are NC-075. That means we're the 75th uh, Air Force unit ever established in the country. And again, our motto is never say die. Um, we were established in 1972, way back in the Stone Age, back then. Um, <laughs> easy, easy, easy. <laughs> Never said that, right? Never said that. Yeah. You got to lighten up a little bit. Yeah, we were established 47 years ago. Again, we were one of the longest-running Air Force units in the country, and we are. That's a fact. We are very proud of, and we do great work continuously. Next slide. Um, and we do great work continuously because we, we believe all cadets can be leaders. Cadets are expected to honor an oath. We take an oath before class every day. I will not lie, cheat, or steal, nor tolerate those who do. Um, we take that oath because we are building better citizens for tomorrow. That is the main goal of Junior ROTC is not to have any military service, military obligation, anything like that, but to build better citizens for tomorrow and to build better citizens for the great country that we live in today. Next slide, please. All right, and here's our, just our little chain of command. I'm the Corps Commander, my, um, and then my Deputy Corps Commander is Cadet Major Jonathan De La Cruz. Um, our standee eval is First Lieutenant Aaliyah Cagle, who's here with us tonight. Uh, again, she is the meanest one out of the entire Corps, so don't get on her bad side. Um, our Command Chief is Chief Master Sergeant Hunter Davis, and our First Sergeant is Chief Master Sergeant Nick Sawyer. Next slide. Um, and again, we've been established for, we've been around for 47 years, quite a long time, and we offer many unique opportunities for our cadets, such as drill team, which we go to marching. Um, we go to many different competitions throughout the year, such as uh, East Henderson, Strike Eagle, Daniel Boone, RS Central, and then also we have Kitty Hawk Air Society, which is this little badge right here, and that, that means we help out students who need help with uh, academics. So we come in in the morning or the afternoon or lunchtime and help kids who need tutoring. So that's a very great thing. And also, at least my personal favorite team, I've got a little bit of bias here, is the Raider team. Um, we go out and do uh, physical fitness competitions against other schools from across Western North Carolina. So that's great things. And with, with that, I would like to pass the, the proverbial baton over to my newly promoted um, Operation Squadron Commander, uh, Captain Clay Payne. All right, so as you can see, we have th uh, three main goals, or main types of goals. We have our Cadet Corps goals, our school goals, and our community impact goals. So uh, the Cadet Corps goals are things we're trying to do inside of the Cadet Corps, such as raise money for fund uh, through fundraisers, or have certain amounts of cadets passing their core classes, such as like math, uh, English, history, and science. Uh, school impact, that's where we actually try to impact our own school, such as, uh, Scola, 
And so that's like we do campus cleanups. Uh, we hold events at the school to raise school, uh, the school money sometimes. We also want to try and recruit at least 50 new cadets for the next school year to boost up that number that we have as our uh, core membership. Uh, the community goals are stuff we're trying to do out in the community, such as the Apple Festival we did recently. We picked up trash for that. Uh, we usually do the um, food drive with the Haywood Postal Service. We also want to have at least an average of 12 community service hours per cadet. We've actually exceeded that, and we have currently 16, uh, an average of 16 community service hours. So as you can see, our PT performance, uh, those are the percentages. Um, actually, most of them are going up, so that is actually really great. Uh, over the next, last few years, they've been going down, so now they're going very steadily up. Uh, as I was saying before, we do a very large amount of community service. Uh, one of the things that I would like to point out is the Hurricane Florence uh, care packages that was actually taken up by a cadet. Uh, they decided on their own accord uh, to pitch that to the group staff. We decided that we would do that. And in return, we can actually earn a uh, something called the Cadet Humanitarian Award, which is a ribbon It goes like right about here-ish, and um, somewhere around there. And so it is actually the third highest ribbon you can get in uh, Air Force Junior RTC. Yeah, two above it, you actually have to save someone's life. So that's, that's pretty cool that we got that one. Uh, I would now like to hand it off to the meanest that we have in the Corps, that First Lieutenant Leah Cagle. I just want to point out the fact that I completely resent that remark. <laughs> um, these are some of our individual cadet achievements. This year we had a cadet go to Boys Nation and earn a four-year Army ROTC scholarship. That was Jack Leslie over there. We sent three boys to NASA camp this summer. We had our first ever 9-11 ceremony. We did a VMI, Virginia Military Institute, and Western Color Guard. This was our 14th annual Veterans Day luncheon. We have four cadets in the National Honor Society. We marched in the 112th annual Canton Labor Day Parade. We had the first ever drill camp. We led the 35th annual Folk Moot Parade. We did flag retirement ceremony for the VFW, and we have two cadets that are currently enlisted in the military. First of all, we have Jonathan Delacruz in the US Air Force, and we have Gage Dyke in the Army. So. What you see first here is our 14th annual Veterans Day luncheon. This is a free lunch for the veterans of our community and it's an opportunity for our cadets to sit down and actually speak with a veteran. Some of us don't have the opportunity in our everyday lives to speak with them and have a living testimony of what it's like to go through the military. And so this is a nice way for them to meet them and boost morale for enlistment. Other, on the other side, we have Military Ball. It's held at the end of the year around prom. It's basically a celebration of everything we've done throughout the year. It, once again, boosts morale, and it starts as a formal dine-in sort of thing and trickles down into sort of party for us at the end of the year. Nothing wrong with that. These are some of our extracurriculars that we have cadets involved in. We have 20 in sports, three in Boy Scouts, 26 working after school, we have six in a youth group, four in marching band, two in concert band, one in band color guard, two in SWAT, one in spirit club, and one in art club. And in our academics, we have two online classes, one student in math club, one in science olympiad, three in college classes, 14 in honors classes, and three in AP classes. Does anybody have any questions? <laughs> That's a good piece. Photoshop Air Force on to that. That's supposed to say U.S. Navy. Yeah, it's supposed to say the Navy, but the Navy rival of the Air Force, and he didn't want to get caught in it. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'd like to thank you for your time and letting us talk here. So thank you. Thank you very much for coming. <laughs> Mr. Rogers wanted to say something. Yeah, also, cadets, thank you very much. I've uh, visited the school and seen the programs always growing. I want to tell you, though, right now that you guys do have a, a good leadership team, Major Klontz, and uh, 
Senior Master Sergeant Robertson has been, he was nominated and elected as the local VFW Teacher of the Year. He has now moved on to the district level Teacher of the Year, and hopefully we'll see Master Senior Major, uh, Master, ha, Senior Master Sergeant Robertson uh, become our Teacher of the Year for the VFW State of North Carolina. So I want to thank you all for your conversation. Thank you all very much for attending tonight, and thank you, Mr. Haney, for having them. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Putnam. Excuse me, Dr. Putnam. <laughs> Dr. Putnam. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, members of the board, we'll begin by acknowledging uh, Tammy, and I told her I'd probably call her Paris because that's what I remember most, Tammy Paris Inslee. She is Pisgah's cheer coach. We have several recognitions for Pisgah cheer. Okay, change of venue. She chickened out. She's nominated Casey Crook. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Thanks for having us again, uh, members of the board, and Dr. Nolte, Dr. Putnam, everybody. We really appreciate this honor. We've got two teams that really did well at the uh, North Carolina Invitational Cheerleading Championships last month. Uh, the first, we're going to introduce our JV team. Uh, Miss Inslee likes to be the grand finale, so uh, I'm going to bring Miss Megan Sorrells up here to introduce them. Thank you. Keep this uh, short and sweet. Tammy's the one who likes to do all the talking. So um, this was my first year back. Um, five years that my last team are now seniors. Um, so we've had a great year. We started out with, um, well, actually all year we've had um, physical and mental problems, a few breakdowns, and uh, in November we had pre-state. We didn't even complete our competition routine. So um, these girls, a um, week leading up to state, um, really just decided they were going to do it. And we came out on top. So um, I've been calling them my bad news bears. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, do I need to introduce them? Or? OK, I'll tell you. OK, we have our captain, Hannah Lighthill. Uh, Macy Lipford. <laughs> Sarah Howe. Logan Hicks. Sarah Airwood. Anna Messer. Anna Mendoza. Mendoza. <laughs> Caitlin Rogers. Alex White. And that's it. Step up on the stage there. Let's take the
Good. Next is going to be our varsity cheer team, who also won the Invitational Tournament, uh, and the cheer coach. Before I introduce her, the cheerleaders would like everyone to know that they were not the ones talking out in the hallway, just to clarify everything. <laughs> it gets blamed on them a lot, but uh, they are not the ones. So, uh, Miss Tammy Inslee. Hello, I'm Tammy. Um, at first, I, I don't, I've never said this, not that I'm here that often, but I did want to, to give a shout out to Coach Crook. Sometimes we don't always see eye to eye, but he does support me and he lets me do my thing and do it the way I want to do it. And he gives me a thumbs up or sometimes a scowl, but we, um, but I just wanted to tell him thank you and, and Pisgah is a great place to work. It's a great place to coach, and I'm proud, proud of my team. We've been competing at the North Carolina High School Athletic Association competition. This was our 11th year. We don't always win. It isn't easy to win. And my team's a little bit different than the majority of teams. We don't, we don't pay somebody to choreograph our routine. We don't pay somebody to um, make our music. We choreograph our routine every year different. We, pay, we, we do new music every year. So that, that sort of sets us aside and might be why sometimes some years are more challenging than others. But we won in 2012 and we've been trying to win again since then. And uh, this year we did it and I'm super proud and it's been super awesome and they're great. Um, we're going to nationals in Disney. We will be at the ESPN Wide World of Sports Complex it is aired on ESPN if we make it that far, which we hope we do. Um, but it's uh, if any of these girls want to try out in college, any college, whether it's a small college or a big college, on their application it'll ask if they've competed at a national competition. Here in rural Western North Carolina, we don't have always the same opportunities that are offered in bigger areas and bigger cities. So um, we're lucky. I'm lucky to have the support at, at Pisgah, your support, Dr. Nolte, Dr. Putnam, for us to be able to take kids out of here and expose them to other things. So we are thankful. I, I'm thankful as a coach and I'm thankful as a parent. Um, so with that, that's all. Um, I'm gonna read their names and Coach Crick's gonna hand them out. Macy Henry, Addison Spivey, Addison Owen. Those are our three varsity captains. Annalise Swanger, Yara Walker, Maya Dietz. Those are seniors. Lily Inslee, Allie Jorstadt, Sydney Messer, Trinity Norton, Emily Robinson, Alyssa Wilson, Brooke Moore, Molly Lanning, Molly Boothroyd, Madison Deaver, Tatiana Sepulveda, Allie Roberts, Shelby Bramlett, Allie Lopp, Kendall Owen. And last but not least is Tara Massey. She is our black bear mascot and our biggest supporter. She, she loves the Pisgah cheerleaders. Um, the, last, the last thing I'll do and I'll make it quick is I had three juniors on the varsity team that were um, selected by the North Carolina Cheerleading Coaches Association for the all-region team. They will travel to um, Southern Alamance High School on February the 3rd to try out for the all-state team. Lily Inslee, Trinity Norton, and Callie Jorstadt. Thank you.
Next, we have uh, Athletic Director Ann Gardner to introduce some uh, achievements at Tuscola High School. Chairman Francis, Board, Dr. Nolte, thank you for having us and recognizing our student athletes from Tuscola High School. Um, we have three groups here tonight with um, all conference nomination or all conference selections for football. Uh, all conference selection for volleyball and then uh, all regional for cheer. So we'll start with uh, all conference football and our football coach JT Postel is here. He will come forward and uh, introduce each of the players and uh, we'll present the certificates from there. Uh, first of all, I want to say uh, thank you to our school board uh, for giving me an opportunity to brag on our kids a little bit because uh, I think that's always a good thing, especially for the amount of work that uh, they put in. I also want to say thank you to the board for, for the support uh, that you give us, not only for football, but for all of our, our student athletes um, on both sides. And I also want to send out a special thanks to Coach Gardner uh, and Mr. Trantham, my principal and athletic director. Uh, it's been unbelievable the support that they've given me this year and that they give all of our coaches, so I really appreciate that. Uh, we had eight young men who uh, made all conference for us this year. I'm going to start off with uh, Mr. Uh, Bailey Ewart. <clears throat> uh, Bailey was somebody, um, this is his second year that he made all conference. Uh, I think at some point during this year, he's, he's the toughest young man that I've probably ever uh, been around as far as on a football field. But I think at some point this year, we had him taped up pretty good. He battled through a lot of ankle injuries, shoulder injuries, knee injuries, but, but he held in there. He never complained, never said a word. Uh, the next young man is Nick Cole. <laughs> Nick's another young man. Uh, one of our seniors was also a captain for us, as was Bailey. Really going to miss him. Nick just did everything that I've ever asked of him to do uh, and played his guts out all year for us. All right, the next young man is Braden Monday. Uh, Braden's another one, had an outstanding year for us. Uh, recently just signed a letter of intent with Liberty University, so really excited about his future, and he was also uh, another one of our captains. All right, next up we have Brandon Collins. As you can see, Brandon just had <laughs> Brandon just had surgery last week. Um, let's talk a little bit about his toughness and his character. This is an injury that he sustained actually for us the second week of August, uh, but he chose to play the remainder of the year, not miss his senior year. Uh, you know, with all these guys that he's played his whole life for. Uh, Brandon just recently um, got a preferred walk-on offer from University of North Carolina. Um, and one of the biggest reasons for that was his, his academics. Uh, he's unbelievable in the classroom, so we're really excited about his future. All right, next up we have uh, Juan Sanchez. Juan's, Juan's just a junior, uh, another young man that's worked tremendously hard, and I'm uh, really excited that we have him back next year. Next, I have Joseph Hernandez.
Joseph's another. He's a uh, young man that's just a junior for us. So we'll have him coming back next year. Uh, just a tremendous young man, does everything we ask. Uh, next, we have Jonathan Smart. <laughs> I joke with Jonathan, or he jokes with me quite a bit, tells me that football is pretty easy uh, because he works on the farm all the time. Uh, <laughs> He's another, he's one of our juniors, and we'll have him back next year. Uh, and the last one is one of our seniors, uh, Zane Edwards. Uh, Zane, I think when we got him as a freshman, I think um, through this year I've, I've played him at about every position on the football field uh, other than the quarterback position. If I had him back for another year, I'd probably do that. Uh, but he's, he, he found his spot this year for us and, and did a great job for us and has been one of our leaders. And I also want to quickly point out uh, that Braden Monday and Bailey Year also were all Western North Carolina selections this year. So we're also proud of them for that. So thank you so much. Next, we'll have uh, Coach Pam Bryant come up and introduce uh, her volleyball all-conference players for this year. All right. Well, good evening. Um, I have the pleasure of recognizing our 2018 all-conference volleyball players. Um, both these ladies, I have to say, are amazing leaders. Um, they just really have carried this program. Um, for a lot of you who may know, it was a program that was one in 57. Um, and in the last three years, these girls have won a total of 37 games, so which is awesome. They've led this program, have totally turned it around. Um, super proud of them. Uh, just a couple things about each one of them. Livy um, did reach her 1,000 assists this year. Um, and both of them have been in the top 10 in pretty a lot of the categories, um, which is awesome in our conference. So super proud of them. Uh, another thing as well, they both were nominated for all Western North Carolina and Livy was honorable mention and Jade was recognized as second team all Western North Carolina. So I'm very proud of both these ladies. So. First of all is Jade Monday. Yeah, I guess so. You can go yes. Get it from me. There you go. And Miss Livy Rich. In the words of uh, Iska's cheerleading coach, last but not least, our varsity cheer, um, and I'll have Coach Tammy Bates come up and introduce her all region. Hi. I would like to recognize these three juniors for being named North Carolina Cheer Coach Association in CCCA all region for this year, and they will try out for state team um, February 3rd. And it's Gabby Hightower, Jessica Bates, and Addison Kirkpatrick.
much more seen. Thank you again. Next on our agenda, we have Mr. Hines. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, uh, thank you for giving us the opportunity tonight. This is a really cool night, and I mean, <laughs> look at all the recognitions with the students and teachers waiting in the hallway, and I think it's really a neat thing that in Haywood County, month in, month out, we spend about 75% of our board time recognizing students and employees for the great things they do, and I appreciate that. Tonight, we want to recognize one of our employees, Cindy, come on up here. <laughs> Cindy has no idea why she's here. <laughs> She's been on pins and needles all week. I kept what? asking, what am I supposed to do to help? What am I doing here? And I said, I don't know. Dr. Nolte said, we we'll invite you. So here we are. Uh, <laughs> but uh, Cindy, when I first came into HR, we met and she said, what exactly is it you need me to do? And I said, well, there's two things. I want you to make sure that every teacher has a license where they're supposed to have it. And I want you to make sure that every employee gets every benefit that they are entitled to. No questions asked. And she has done that to a T. Uh, this uh, past uh, November, she uh, was not recognized by name, but it was quite a honor for Haywood County Schools to be recognized by the state health plan statewide for being one of 22 out of 115 districts in the state to have 100% participation in the state health plan with no errors. Okay, and that, you're talking about almost 1,100 employees. <laughs> so tonight, uh, this certificate goes way beyond just the state health plan, but we are uh, giving Cindy a certificate in recognition of excellent service to the state of North Carolina and the employees of Haywood County Schools. As coordinator of the enrollment program, your efforts have ensured excellent benefits to our employees. Haywood County Schools was one of 22 districts in the state to have 100% participation. Thank you, board member. Chairman, this is this is kind of one of these tools we mentioned earlier in my prayer. So, thank you to that lady. Thank you. I appreciate y'all for giving me the opportunity. Next on our agenda, I'd like to recognize Ms. Jill Barker. Congratulations. Ms. Glance is going to go first. Is that okay, Chairman Francis? Sure. Okay. Mr. Chairman, Dr. Nolte, members of the board, I'd like to recognize tonight 10 teachers that are career and technical education that will be receiving bonuses for credentials that their students have earned in their classes. They've earned credentials in either Microsoft Word, PowerPoint, Excel, ServeSafe, um, CNA, NCCER, um, can be OSHA, EverFi, and so forth are some of the credentials that we've earned. So um, first off is Amanda Early from Tuscola. <laughs> Roberta D'Alessandra from Tuscola. <laughs> Eric Solly. Solly. 
Amy Brown, she earned her, her kid was from Central Hollywood, but now she's at Tuscola this yes. year. Thank you. Lisa Bargan from Tuscola. <laughs> Stephanie Kirkendall from Pisgah. Amy Gardner from Tuscola. <laughs> Anita Bergen from Tuscola. <laughs> and then uh, my last two from Pisgah that were not able to come tonight was Jacob, Han Hannah, and Brandy Matthews. crowd is a wonderful thing when it's all this good it's been awesome I told Trevor I said we got a lot of people out here but then you start thinking about um, how much it means to every individual in this room to have that recognition and I just want you to know it doesn't go noticed but Chairman Francis members of the board Dr. Nolte Dr. Putnam and staff I just want to take this time right now to congratulate many of our elementary and middle school teachers um, tonight we're going to recognize them they're receiving performance bonuses that will be included in their January paycheck based on academic growth for the for last school year 1718 school year teachers are eligible for bonuses if they finish in the top 25 percent in the state or and or top 25 percent in the LEA third grade teachers receive bonuses for reading only fourth and fifth grade can receive bonuses in reading and math and middle school receive bonuses for math only sixth seventh and eighth grade at this time, we're going to recognize them not only for their hard work for high growth. You know, what that means is they take students, they're meeting them where they are, and they're growing them. They're improving academically, which Mr. Rogers talked about earlier. Um, to do this, in my opinion, you have to know your kids. You have to know them very well. You have to have a strong relationship with them. You have to be dedicated. You have to be persistent. And a lot of patience a lot of patience so I just don't want them to know I hope you can hear me can y'all hear me I mean I admire each one of them I know the job that they do every day and I'm so proud of them and I'm so glad they're gonna get a little money in their pocket so thank you so at this time we'll recognize them from Bethel Elementary hang on let me get my I know Julie's got me organized here Meredith Allen Lynn Garrett. Maria Miller. Karen Hopkins. Sharon Marshall. Courtney Myers. She used to be a student. Oh, I can't figure this out. How this? How, I won't. I'm not. Okay, Holly Troll. And that's it for Bethel Elementary. Give them a round of applause. Next, we'll move to middle school, math only, Matt Golden. Canton Middle School, Ashley Hall Hightower, <laughs> Mallory Hensley, <laughs> and
and Norma Warren. Clyde Elementary School, Heather Chastain. Aaron Horton. Lauren King. <laughs> Hazelwood Elementary, Suzanne Colley. Sarah Howe. Laura Kirchner, Elizabeth Rogers, and Emma Smith, Amanda Williamson. Hazelwood. Next, Jonathan Valley. Ashley Caldwell could not be here tonight, but Laura Ernest. <laughs> Caroline Patterson from Jonathan Valley is not here, and Rachel Rosati, but again, they will receive the award and um, bonuses. Next, June Alaska Elementary, Taylor Boyd. <laughs> Shannon Coley Reese. Okay, Crystal Ford, that's Michelle Ford. That throws me off, Michelle. Okay, congratulations. Amy Kilgore. Mary Norris. Brittany Pless. Brittany was actually in AIG last year, but somehow we don't, not sure. She got attached to Gina Leska, but she actually started all of our kids last year. Um, Haley Prince, our Haywood County Teacher of the Year. <laughs> and Joel Sellers. Okay, next, Meadowbrook Elementary. Brianna Devlin. Are y'all seeing why this is a good thing? All these people, I know. It, I, okay. Every, every time someone walks by, children grew. I know. A lot. And I can remember when this wasn't this big. This is also awesome. okay. Allison Hutchby. <laughs> All right, North Canton Elementary, Samantha Burleson. <laughs> Angela Duckett. Debbie Howe. <laughs> Pamela Valentine. <laughs> Riverbend Elementary. Suzanne Bigsby. <laughs> Don't think Suzanne can make it. Leslie Buchanan. Maggie King. John Riley is not here. Kara Scapin is also not here from Riverbend Elementary. Waynesville Middle, Sherry Hill. Lisa Lawrence. Tammy Little, and Kelly Williams. And again, I don't know if y'all heard me. I want you to know I, I see each one of you. I know the work you're doing. 
Um, I know how tough it is out there, but I know you love what you do. And when you love what you do and you care, it shows in our kids, and they're better for you. And Haywood County is so fortunate to have you. So stay with us forever and keep loving our kids and teaching our kids. Thank you so much. Now come get your picture made up. Okay. <laughs> All right, Mr. Haney's next. To continue the celebration of uh, success in our classrooms, it's my honor to introduce our advanced placement teachers who have done very well. Uh, actually, the test is later in the spring, so it's, this is actually based on last year's test. But these teachers challenge these students every day, and when we're done, they want to give you a test to see if you could get in their classroom or not. So good luck on the test if you can get in their classroom or not. So, Ms. Hanson? Ms. Hanson teaches uh, English Lit at Pisgah High School. <laughs> Tabitha Judy is not with us tonight. She teaches English Language. Maggie Melville from Tuscola High School teaches English Lit. She is not with us tonight. Stephanie Morgan, Pisgah High School Calculus. <laughs> Randy Presley from Tuscola High School. He does our calculus at Tuscola High School. Joy Robinson is our Tuscola High School English language. Robbie Rawls is our English lit teacher from Tuscola High School. <laughs> Sean Sampson is with Pisgah High School. He teaches biology and earth and environment. Erica Smiley from Tuscola High School, U.S. History. And Tiffany Turner from Pisgah High School, U.S. History. Dr. Noli just reminded me that uh, 
to get the bonus in AP, you have to score a three, four, five on the AP test, and they get $50 per student. And if you get a chance to come by, they've done very well. Our students have done very well in their class, and these teachers have really raised the bar and have high expectations of these students. So thank you very much. Chairman Francis, members of the board, Dr. Nolte, Dr. Putnam, Ms. Barker, and friends, we are here tonight to recognize Jessica Perry. So you want to come on up, Jessica? She was selected by administrators and her peers to represent Haywood County Schools as our EC Educator of Excellence um, at our state conference in November. She began her career in special education 19 years ago as an inclusion teacher, is that right? Um, in 2001, she began working for Haywood County Schools at Clyde Elementary as a resource teacher. Um, she took various positions at various schools across our LEA over the years, and she came full circle back to Clyde in 2010 in our intensive intervention class. Um, she's a true exceptional teacher leader. Um, she's a teacher in our county's most intensive setting, but she's also um, revered as a mentor among her peers. Colleagues, both new and experienced, look to her for advice, support, and guidance professionally. But above all, Jessica is an advocate for her students. She's a teacher who genuinely strives to educate herself and others in regard to children with special needs. And she's often called upon to provide professional development opportunities within her school and within our LEA and across the state. She's considered an expert working with our severe and profound population. Um, in regard to extended content standards and instruction and management. Her influence goes beyond the borders of Haywood County. She serves as a instructor in the special education department at Western Carolina, teaching classes pertaining to adaptive curriculum. She displays strengths in identifying the deficits of her students, then creatively provides options for assisting the students to develop the necessary skills it takes to achieve academically and socially. Most importantly, she does not let her students fail. Progress is the only option in her classroom. She knows the curriculum, she's well versed in strategies, has a positive nurturing relationships with all her students and parents, and collaborates well with her colleagues. So we're here tonight to recognize Jessica, long awaited recognition for our um, EC Educator of Excellence for 1819. Um, Okay. <laughs> I have to call back later. Before you get started, Dr. Bill, I'd like to just make one comment and observation. Uh, we've had a great uh, number of recognitions tonight, which just shows the hard work and dedication of our people. Without people, you don't accomplish things, and there was a lot of great things accomplished that was on display this evening. I will back up what the Pisgah cheerleader said about the noise level in the hall. I believe it was the teachers more loud than the cheerleader. <laughs> I concur with their observation. <laughs> but that's good. We've got to have good conversations. Dr. Nolte. Thank you so much, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, Dr. Putnam, uh, Mrs. Barker, uh, staff and guests. Um, at this, uh, we, again, just take privilege for a second here. Um, as Mr. Rogers uh, led in prayer early in the meeting, we are so blessed and we are very thankful uh, for the success uh, extracurricularly and academically uh, of our people. We have good people uh, and they do good things, not perfect people by any means, but very good people. So just wanna say that we are so blessed. Um, it is uh, time, that time of year for us to share the budget development schedule 
for 2019-2020. Uh, I'll begin by saying we're not expecting a lot of new money or extra money, uh, but we are being very creative in the way that we spend funds and we think we're being very efficient and effective. And this is our planning schedule. The dates on the schedule may certainly change uh, depending upon when you all can meet or when the commissioners want to meet with us or when different information is available. But according to our board policy 8100, I wanted to share the schedule with you and just talk to you briefly about uh, the things that we'll be doing to build the schedule for the next fiscal year. On January the 9th, we had our regular principals meeting and I shared this schedule with the principals. And I also talked to them about the budget request forms. Those uh, forms are not completely new. We've taken the ones that we've used in the past and modified them just a little bit. Tonight is the 14th and we're sharing the schedule with you all, the Board of Education. Uh, our, the budget request forms uh, will be due back on February the 6th. And so we'll, we'll receive those back on the 6th. In February, and we put dates to be arranged there, we'll be doing what the state calls the superintendent's review for the superintendent's recommended budget. We'll do an office review, and then I will contact the finance committee, and we will do a pre-review with finance. Certainly other members can come, but we'll have a big review with all of the board uh, at a work session on or about March 7th. And again, depending upon the weather and, and who can meet when. So early in March, we'll have a large review of the proposed budget, the requests have come in, what we, um, what we believe our uh, revenues will be and what our expenditures could be. We will have a public hearing on the board. That is usually in conjunction with an April board meeting. And we know that uh, funny things happen in April and there's a lot going on. We have spring break and lots of activities. So sometime in April, we'll have a public hearing uh, on the board uh, to look at the budget and share the budget with people in the community who might be interested in it. And then we will present the budget to the commissioners prior to May 15th. They have requested that presentation anywhere from March to May. So when they ask us to give them the presentation, we will do that. Um, and then we will ask for your approval uh, of the board you know, probably in June and try to get final approval no later than July 1. So that is the schedule. Uh, just in general, we've spent a lot of time in the meeting already recognizing people, so I don't want to spend too much additional time. But in general, we want to lay lots of sets of eyes on the budget. Um, we'll have supervisors and principals um, making requests. We'll do a preliminary review in my office. We'll have a, a review by um, members of the finance committee, and then we'll have a review by uh, any board member who attends the work session um, and then a public hearing and of course sharing it with the commissioners. So that is the budget uh, schedule. Uh, again, some of the dates may change and we look forward to preparing that budget. Again, I don't expect a lot of additional money, but we'll be as wise as we can be and as efficient as we can be. Are there any questions about the budget development schedule? Looks like you're going to be busy, and the dates are easy to set. The the work behind the scenes I know is going to be intensive, and so good luck with that process. And thank you for presenting the proposed schedule of events for the budget development. We look thank forward to it, and look forward to your participation. We'll work on it together. We have had some folks that signed up wanting to address the board in open session. Tonight, now is the time period designated by the Board of Education for public comments. This time is set aside for comments from the general public in regard to matters of concern to the public. However, comments addressing specific students and or personnel are prohibited due to confidentiality laws and regulations. Comments are limited to three minutes. The Board requests that all speakers adhere to the time limitation and prohibition against mentioning individual students and personnel. And Ms. King, are you 
have you got a timer for us this evening? We will strictly adhere to the three minute uh, time limit. I'll tell you that up front. We always have in the past and we will tonight also. Uh, next, we've had four folks to sign up. And first we have Mr. James Haynes from the Gideons International that would like to uh, address the board. Mr. Haynes, you may address the board. Come forward. Good evening, Chairman Francis, members of the Haywood County School Board. I'm Jim Haynes. I'm a member of Gideon's International. I'm here to enter a request to distribute Bibles in Haywood County Schools on behalf of the Haywood County Gideons. 1937, Gideon's International Cabinet approved the placement of full Bibles on the desk of every teacher in USA and Canada. In 1946, First Testament were played in fifth through twelfth grades. 1963, Gideon's organized in Haywood County for the first time and began placement, I believe, the fifth grade that year. 1994, Dr. Campbell called me to her office and said because of a, a lawsuit that was proposed that we need to stop distribution. We have not placed any since then, with the exception in 1995, we did decide to do a sidewalk distribution at Waynesville Middle School. That went rather well until the bus routing was changed and the buses go up in the horseshoe and we limited it to car riders. We still do that. And then there's also some placement in Canton, Canton Middle School. In 2016, during our, one of our sidewalk distributions, there was a couple of young girls, we called them our little blonde-headed angels, got off a bus and came to the sidewalk and got testaments for themselves. And it wasn't but just a minute that they came back. They wanted some for their friends. Before that bus left, they passed out over 100 copies of God's Word. We're here tonight to request that you, the Haywood County Board of Education, allow the Gideons International to offer testaments to our fifth through twelfth grade, initially, annually, to the fifth grade students. It is clear in America that uh, we're in desperate need of prayer and the good news of God's Word. God has promised that to hear our prayers and accept our repentance, as stated in 2 Chronicles 7, 14. I ask you to intercede for our nation, our state, our county, and especially our children. Early Americans understood that in order for a nation to thrive and prosper, God's word must provide the basis of that government and the welfare of society. This is why I think suicide among our youth is an epidemic. School shootings are increasing. It's not a gun problem, it's a sin problem. People need hope, not validation for their sin. Sin leads to depression, hopelessness, and fear. We're talking, uh, taking a stand against those who strongly are committed to the destruction of anything rooted in our nation's Christian heritage. They attempt to be one nation above God rather than one nation under God. Scripture identifies this as foolishness, self-exaltation, arrogance, and the downfall of nations. There is a saying that one generation plants trees for the next generation. I'm concerned that instead of planting, we're removing and destroying the very covering that protects us. As a result, our legacy as a great nation and a noble nation has all but been forgotten. For instance, most schools no longer teach students about the spiritually found, spiritual foundation that guided America throughout our history. Consequently, America's moral and religious heritage is often deleted, grossly distorted, or revised altogether. As a result, result, students often miss a critical connection between America's unparalleled greatness and her rise to world leadership and the spiritual foundation that made that possible. It should be of concern to all of us. The, idea in the, the ideas in the classroom today are create, that are created become the ideas of government uh, next, next year. There are times to encourage, motivate, and uplift, but there are also times to confront, challenge, and contend for what is right. That time is now. Let it not be said of us today that there arose another generation after them who did not know the Lord. That's Judges 2.10. We ask prayerfully that you grant our request. Thank you, board. Thank you, Mr. Haynes. Next, we have uh, Shell Baker representing the Tuscola Wrestling Program. Hello, and I'm Shelly Baker, and thank you for letting me speak. I appreciate that. And hello, Dr. Nolte and Dr. Putnam. And I would like to begin by saying that um, I've heard everybody speak here tonight and talk about how um, everybody needs to work together as a team and how great of a school district we have, and we do. And I think that it's a wonderful school district, and I think that 
um, to school is great. And I would like to see our school come together more, especially when it comes to the wrestling um, program that we have. I was a little shocked to find out that my son has to share his singlet, um, his wrestling singlet. I have a set of twins on the wrestling team and they have been wrestling and he, um, when he is done with his, when the kid before him is done with his match, he has to quick go change out of that wrestling singlet that he was wearing and give it to my son who then has to wear a singlet that somebody else wrestled in and he has to wrestle in it because they're short of singlets, there's not enough. That is a huge hygiene issue that is unacceptable and not okay. The wrestling team has been asking for singlets since the beginning of the season. They've been short, the coach has been asking, the parents have been asking, and it has been falling on deaf ears, I think. I don't understand the issue. Um, we have spoken with administration at the beginning. We have been told that that was not an issue that we needed to address as parents, that that was an issue that they needed to speak with the coach directly about. I understand that the coach has been possibly having some um, a hard time um, making contact with the administration. I'm not sure exactly where the problem is, but I know that we've not gotten singlets. Um, we went to the Big T meeting to try to get money for singlets for the team. They had it approved. They said that we could come back on December 6th and vote for the money that they had the money allocated. We showed up December 6th with parents to vote for it and we were told that administration said no, that that wouldn't happen. We were told this at the meeting, that they said no, that the coach could come to them directly and they would work something out with the coach. A month later, here we are, the um, still waiting for singlets. Um, the coach has the design made, they're ready to order, he's waiting for approval. They're just sitting there waiting. This is the current singlet that they're wrestling in. This is what they look like. Um, this is what represents to school and now. They're not allowed access into the locker rooms to shower. So they can't shower. That's an hygiene issue. If I'm wrong, then they should be able to shower. They, they don't have access to locker rooms. If I'm wrong, then let them in there. Let them shower. Um, there's MRSA, there's staff. These boys should be allowed to shower. This is very unacceptable. This is. I, I don't know what else to do besides come here and ask for your help at this point. As a parent, please help so that these boys can have enough singlets so that they're not sharing, so that they can have access to locker rooms to shower. Thank you, I really appreciate it. Thank you, Ms. Baker. Next, we have uh, Angela Logan. I hope I'm saying it right. Angela, is that correct? Yes. With the Tuscola Wrestling. I don't know if you all know, but wrestling moms are really compassionate about wrestling. Um, I'm kind of following up on Shell's comments about hygiene, and I did bring some photos of my son. I would like to pass him around. Is that allowed? This is, um, and then I'd like for everyone to see them. There are things just not happening with the wrestling program. Uh, my son is a senior and it's been going on all four years. Um, for some reason, they're not allowed to use the showers. They're not allowed to use the weight room this semester, this year, for uh, reasons we don't, are not told and not, under, and not led to have any understanding of. Um, our coach this year has been really great and understanding, and although he was hired only two weeks before the wrestling season started and knows no one to contact um, you know, he is, he's, in spite of everything, done a great job. The kids really love him. 
but you know, there's only so much you can do when um, you have great parents go before um, the administration and ask for things specifically and they just don't happen. Um, I'm, I'm so glad Shell brought a, a singlet up here because I was, I was thinking that a lot of people here probably don't know what singlets are. You know, they're, they're something that we take home, our, bro, our boys bring home and they really, really smell bad <laughs> and they go straight into the washer. And um, they contain all kinds of things, um, germs. And um, the thought of a boy putting on another boy's singlet after they've wrestling, after they've wrestled is, is, was our breaking point. Um, my son, I would like for everyone to see this. This is what my son went through from unclean mats and um, supplies that just aren't there for wrestling. It's like they're the redheaded stepchild of sports. And I haven't said anything till, th till this year because my son's a senior and you're afraid that, you know, someone will take it out on him if you, if you complain. But we're on our way out, and I'm here for the future wrestlers and the future of Tuscola wrestling. And I hope you all can understand, you know, there needs to be some attention paid to this program. There's great kids, great parents, great talent that's not being developed. Um, and, you know, we're really at a point where we're here to reach out in desperation. So I appreciate y'all listening, and I hope to see some action, because I'd love to come and watch your boys wrestle next year. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Logan. Next we have Brian Beck, and he's also going to talk to us about Tuscola wrestling. Imagine that. <laughs> <laughs> Just not about speeding or anything. So. It's not about speeding. Today. Okay, good. Let's clarify that. <laughs> tomorrow okay <laughs> okay folks thank you I, i've been absolutely overwhelmed tonight sitting here listening to everybody and seeing everything that's took place and the academics that are happening uh, within our schools i know my kids have come up through the schools our kids are coming up through the schools um these kids are athletes i mean if you've not watched them you've not seen them watch out folks every one of these kids are something to be to behold and to watch and we look and we want to give all of our kids in this district in this school district haywood county equal opportunity. We want to give them all the ability to take a shower, to not have to, have you ever watched a wrestling match, gonna watch one of the high school wrestling matches? When they come off the mat, what do they look like? Sweat and tired. They're nothing but ringing, stinking sweat. Yeah. And now you're putting that singlet back on another kid. Yeah. Happens to be our kid that it's going on to. So they've covered that issue. The issue I want to talk about is facilities. This county is lacking in facilities, majorly. We've got an empty school sitting in downtown Waynesville that Tuscola could actually be using as a practice facility. I'm told they can't because of transportation needs. Can't get them there. It takes up the entire wrestling budget just to take and bus them to that school or to that area to do that. Right now, they're wrestling and practicing in a room that's probably, oh, I'll just go just a little further out from this wall. And probably to Mr. Putnam, that's probably about the size of the room that they've got to practice and wrestling. Nowhere to condition, nowhere to weight lift, no facilities, other facilities. I was there for the first few practices. They couldn't even get into the janitorial closet to get water to wash the mats. I went and found janitors and got janitors to actually come and open up. And we had to do that for a while. That issue's taken care of. And issues can be taken care of, but they can only be taken care of with help. I can't expect the administration of Tuscola to take care of everything by themselves. They're gonna to have to have the help of the school board. We gotta look at facilities. We gotta look at these schools. We gotta look at these programs. I know schools are not about all athletics, but you know what? They bring a heck of a lot of pride to this county, don't they? Mm -hmm. And it is if you look at your leaders uh, throughout this country, throughout this, this area, what do they have in common? Majority of them have in common. Sometimes of sports, athletics, teams, working together, character building. We need to provide that to our kids. We need to look at some facilities, whether it's joint facilities, large, it doesn't matter. We just need to do something. I thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Beck. All these issues will be, of course, referred to our superintendent and report back to the board. 
Okay. Let's see. Board members, you've had an opportunity to read the December 13th closing regular session minutes. At this time, what would be I'll your- I'll make a motion we approve the minutes as is. Okay, we have a motion from Mr. Kirkpatrick, second Ms. Barrett. Any questions or discussion on the motion on the floor? There being them, we'll vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next we have on our agenda, Ms. Vallier. Chairman Francis, members of the board, for your approval, I am asking on behalf of the calendar committee and Dr. Nolte and the central office that we um, move the optional work day that was scheduled on February 22nd to the end of the year for two reasons. We got the ACT schedule and it is scheduled during that time. And um, the makeup day is also, it was the next week, so we, we couldn't move it to the next week. And then we want to use that for weather makeup should we need it. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion we approve the revised calendar as presented. Okay, Mr. Rogers made the motion. Do I hear a second? Second. Second, Mr. Clark. Any question or discussion on the motion on the floor? There being none, we'll vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. And for your approval, you have the 2019-20 Haywood Early College calendar. Okay. <coughs> Chairman, I'll make a motion. We approve the Haywood Early College calendar as well. Okay, we have a motion from Mr. Rogers. Do I hear a second? Second. Second, Ms. Barrett. Any question or discussion on the motion on the floor? There being none, we'll vote. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Valliere. Next board members, uh, you, I hope you had a chance to look over the uh, proposed resolution for that we'd like to send down to our legislators along with our county commissioners to ask for this board to have the flexibility along with our administration to set our starting and ending dates of school. Um, I would ask approval of the resolution as presented. Make a motion we approve. Second. Mr. Henson's made a motion and seconded by Dr. Rogers. Any questions or discussion on the motion on the floor? There being none, we'll vote. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Uh, we also would like to, just for your information, we will uh, forward our resolution to the County Board of Commissioners and ask for their support, uh, either sign on or do their own resolution. And I would request that we do that. It would help us because if we work together with the uh, County Commissioners Association, uh, you get a lot more done in legislative, uh, uh, down at the Legislative Assembly, which will be meeting coming up before too long, if we're not already in session. Thank you, board members. Next, we have a presentation from Ms. Jackson. Ms. Jackson. Chairman Francis, members of the board, Dr. Nolte, Dr. Putnam, Ms. Sparker, and others, I bring to you for your approval the bid process for our wide area network, or WAN, for 2019 through 2022. Our wide area network provides connectivity to all of our schools and auxiliary sites, as well as services such as phones, internet, and other network resources that assist with payroll, bookkeeping, child nutrition, and more. In accordance with federal E-rate guidelines, we began the bid process on November 15th with the posting of our RFP. Two vendors submitted proposals and our recommendation was chosen based on price of goods and services along with prior experience, references, service transition, and local response time. Board approval is required prior to signing contracts for E-rate services. Tonight, I ask for your approval to enter into a contract with AT&T as the winner of our 2019 through 2022 WAN bid at an annual cost of $141,370.92. At this time, I entertain a motion as to the approval of the bid. So moved. Dr. Rogers has made the motion to enter into a contract with AT&T. Is that correct? That's correct. Uh, as presented. Uh, do I hear a second? Second. Second, Mr. Kirkpatrick. 
any uh, question or discussion on the motion on the floor? There being what separation was there between the bids? Between the bids, the separation was fifty-six thousand seven hundred thirty-seven dollars and forty-four cents. With who being the second highest? Spectrum. That's all the questions I have. Any other questions or comments before we vote? There being no further discussion at this time, uh, all those in favor say aye. Uh -huh. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Jackson. <clears throat> Next, we have Dr. Putnam uh, for our policy first reading of 3420. Yes, sir. Just uh, a note on that. 3420 was actually brought before you, but it was not attached last time, so I have resubmitted that uh, for your review. Okay. Any questions about policy 3420? As per board policy, the uh, policy 3420 will be tabled for public input for enough time to get us back in here to meet again next month <laughs> at our next regular board meeting in other words <laughs> right. thank you thank you dr putnam <clears throat> next we have our regular monthly financial reports from our finance chair mr clark i have one uh add motion it's a motion to approve one additional month of employment for tusco's rotc program Instruction beginning with fiscal year 2019 and 20, project, projected cost of $13,016. And here's a breakdown of it. And uh, what this is about is um, Pisgah has a Naval ROTC. They go 12 months, and the Navy picks up uh, one half of that. And then the Tuscola are on 10 months. But they're also expected to do summer activities, which is camps, uh, drills, uh, I don't remember what all they are, all kinds of stuff, training and stuff like that. So we're agreeing to give them another month's pay, which the principal would uh, be uh, know what days they would have, and they could do it like uh, 20 days, so they could break it down throughout the summer and uh, be paid for extra activities and stuff. So. That's what we're asking for. Well, we have a motion for Mr. Clark. Do I hear a second? Second, Mr. Chair. So, Mr. Rogers, any questions or discussion on the motion on the floor? I think it's a very good thing for our students that we showed tonight how much the cadets of Tuscola have increased in their in their program and how, how well and successful they're doing. And yeah, I did look at that. That was there it's extra programs in the summer training that they have camps that our our students have not been able to participate in in the past and this will give them another opportunity to help that program even grow more and succeed. I mean, in our 47 years, let's keep it going. I think there's sometimes they've actually gone on some of those trips and just not gotten paid. Not gotten it. paid, yes. That's And that's not fair to our people. Any other questions, comments? There are being none, we'll vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Hey, also, Mr. Chairman, I just needed a motion to approve the regular monthly finance reports. Uh, Angie went through everything, and everything looks good. Okay, we have a motion from Mr. Clark. I hear a second. I'll say. Go ahead. Say, Mr. Francis, so he just a split second quicker. <laughs> we have a motion from Mr. Clark, second, Mr. Francis. Any questions or discussion on the motion on the floor? There being none, we'll vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Anything else from finance? Oh, sir, that's all I have. Thank, Thank you very much, Mr. Clark. Next, we have an add-on from the building and grounds from Dr. Bobby Rogers. Mr. Chairman, building and grounds committee submits a motion to allow crew leaders in the maintenance department personal usage of Haywood County schools vehicles. In other words, the ability to drive those to their home uh, to improve response rate. Uh, this would all be pending the development of an accountability and personal use agreement that uh, needs to receive the approval of our, our board attorney before it's implemented. Basically, this is adding an additional cost of $10,000 a year. Uh, that cost to be absorbed by the current maintenance budget without amendment. Okay. So we have a motion from the building and grounds from Dr. Rogers. Do I hear second? Second. Okay, Mr. Burnett. Okay, Mr. Barnett. 
I believe you's a little bit quicker, though. <laughs> we have a motion on the floor. Uh, any questions or comments on the motion on the floor? Is there any insurance concerns with them taking them to their house and those vehicles being off school property and stuff? Penalties are doing that now, flying vehicles to and from home for the response time. Okay. Makes sense. Any other comments, questions? There being none, we'll vote. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. That all from building and grounds. Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Oh, Chairman. Can, yes, sir. I uh, think there was a matter of school board training credits that you were going to Thank address. you. You're exactly right. You can thank Brooke. <laughs> we need to uh, approve uh, four of our board members. Is that correct, Brooke? Isn't it four? Uh, did the training for after the election. My mind's not yeah, ethics. 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 E <laughs> ethics. Ethics. Ethical. ethics training. So these guys should have good etiquette and ethics. No, <laughs> but in order to get credit, the board has to take official action and then send it down to the North Carolina School Board Association so you can get some continuing education credits for that. And we appreciate you attending that because that is by state law that we have to do that. But anyway. This time we entertain a motion that we approve the four uh, newly elected board members uh, the continuing education credit hours to be sent down to the North Carolina School Board Association. I'll make that motion. All right, Mr. Francis made the motion. I hear a second. I'll second. Second, Mr. Clark. Any questions or discussion on the motion on the floor? There being none, we'll vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Four or five. Thank you. There's only four that went to four the that, Four that went, okay. So they asked five, they asked five. One person yeah, didn't show that. Yeah. Oh, you went to the big one. You went to the one in Raw. Yeah, you went to Oh, you fancy. So do we need to do a free piece as well? Did you do it through the North Carolina School Board Association? Yeah, he went through the association. Okay, well, then it should be taken care of. Okay. All right. Everybody's on the toes tonight. I like that. Dr. Nolte. Good thing. Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> I need a little bit. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, uh, Dr. Putman, Ms. Barker, staff and guests, uh, for your uh, consideration and approval, the matters that we discussed regarding personnel. Under personnel for information, we have 13 separation from employment. We have one employee status change, 11 leave of absence. For your approval, we have nine employments, 11 employee status changes, two uh, memorandums of agreement, three substitutes, <coughs> 28 employee coaches getting ready for spring sports, mm -hmm. uh, nine non-employee coaches, and nine volunteer coaching services. Okay. I make a motion we approve personnel as presented. Mr. Kirkpatrick has made the most. I hear a second. Second by Ms. Barrett. Any questions or discussion on the motion on the floor? There being none, we'll vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Nolte. Mr. Chairman. Yeah, Mr. Rogers. Uh, I'd like to say one thing, Mr. Chairman. I, I would uh, sincerely hope that we very seriously take a look at the items that were presented during open session, uh, the comments that were made. I, I really really like to you say our staff take a good close look at these opportunities that we have to help serve our kids again okay mr chairman i'd like to add on to that a little bit if i could sure um my own personal opinion it's not the opinion of the board but my own personal opinion is uh for the, for the folks that was here for the wrestling team i feel pretty confident that's being addressed as we speak now because uh, I seen the principal moving pretty quickly. I did too. <laughs> um, but secondly, um, presentation by Mr. Haynes and the request that was made by him, I would ask that we take that up in a work session uh, to discuss in depth um, 
The Bible's not only the Word of God. It's the foundation of morality. It's the foundation by which our laws were set in motion. It's our nation's first textbook. And it's something that we, it's a request we need to take very seriously. Absolutely. And, uh, and look at, because it does have a profound impact on the community. Okay. Anything else to? I agree. I'm before the board. Okay. I agree. I agree. I think there's a consensus. I think there's a consensus. Yeah. <laughs> I agree. I don't think it needs to be stated. But anyway, uh, we'll add it to a work session agenda. <coughs> Sounds like a winner. Anything else? Nothing else. Meeting adjourned. <laughs>